we have to create the right vibe, you know, the energy and everybody at the organization has to feel so privileged to be here. It's, it's no other way. Thanks for listening to the Purely Arsenal podcast. Please follow us on Twitter at Purely Arsenal FP for all the latest Arsenal podcasts. Welcome to another edition of the Sit Down at a Purely Arsenal podcast. We're a little under the weather here, but the sun is shining on Arsenal. And I've got Neil Shah with me. How are you doing, Neil? Hey, Jack. Hey, James. How are you both? You all right? Terrific, mate. Terrific. James Johnson as well. Thank you for introducing him. How are you doing, James? Good morning. Yeah, especially to everybody that's top of the league. Good morning to you. Oh, Good yes. evening, whatever, three whenever us. you're watching it. Yeah. <laughs> and the listeners, of course. All yeah. Of you. Um, but yeah, we appreciate it. But it's two wins, back-to-back away wins after that lucky win for Man City at the Emirates um, so it's a good response it's uh, a tough t- tough two places to go Villa Park and, and Leicester aren't easy places to go I think Leicester have been um, the fourth m- most on form team since January I want to say um, so they definitely had a little turn because they were terrible before January of course um, and a 1-0 win to discuss just before we discuss it we're going to do our usual from last week quick quiz question our final unbeaten game of the 2004 season was, of course, against Leicester. What was the score? I think you know. And who were the three goal scorers? James said, Neil can go first. Off you go. <laughs> I've given you a little hint. Yeah. It's three. Uh, so one of our ex-players scored their goal. I forgot his blooming name. Oh, damn. Hang on. Oh, it was so, and I remember even the comment. I was, I was there. It wasn't the first bloody row. Can I not remember this? Oh, really? Vera scored our equaliser. Yeah, I was there. Um, Vera scored the equaliser, I think. Who scored the winner? Hold on. Was it on? Was it Henri? Okay, you've got our, you've but, got our two goal scorers there. Yeah, but who was the? Oh, what was his play name? James, do you know it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, he's going to be one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. So I believe we won two one. It was Vieira on It was Vieira on Henri and Paul Dickoff. Paul Dickoff scored for Leicester. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very well done. Very well done. See, told you get it quickly. This one, very good. I think off the top of my head, those goals might be flipped. I think Vieira scored the winner, didn't he? Because he won the penalty. For, wasn't it a penalty for Henri where he, that, that was that one where he was uh, looking at the ref as he fell? I thought Vieira scored the You might be I wrong. Vier, the winner was, the winner, I thought for some reason the winner was a tapping from Vieira, but you might be right. It might be the other way around. Oh, it maybe it was Vieira. But it was definitely, you were right. It was definitely Henri and Vieira. And um, obviously we went 1-0 down though, didn't we? I think Dickoff looked one nil down. that post or something. That's what the- that's what I was the highlights comment that it said that's not in the script no, yeah no. yeah yeah and we were well they didn't like, read the script that's it, it, it you, 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 are, you are correct Thierry Henry scored the equaliser scored the, pe- scored the penalty on the 47th minute ah and yeah. Vieira scored in the 66th yeah yeah there you go, As- there you go. assisted by well, fitting to Dennis Burkamp yeah it was a Dennis Burkamp through ball Just- <laughs> yeah yeah I remember yeah. it now yeah it was a lovely through ball yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I've always done this book. The joys of Google when your mind is frazzled in the morning. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. But um, there you go. Well, call that one a piece. James got the Leicester goal score, the ex Arsenal. Yeah. Neil got the other. One of the most important games you'd think I'd know that off the top of my head, wouldn't you? But, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank, yeah no. thank, the, been, thank you. Thank you, search engines. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. I was going to talk to you about the, the Leicester winning <laughs> title winning season. And, and obviously, we did the double in that season. So I was going to ask a question on that. But I thought I'd go with this one. But um, cause it's all about Arsenal. Neil. Um, we made one change that was unexpected. We, we, we took Eddie out. There were some rumours that he had an ankle knock, not confirmed by Arteta. Arteta, so we have to assume at this point that it was a rotational or we dropped him, um, which I think would be understandable over the last couple of games. Not that he's not given 100%, but he's definitely been off form a little bit in front of goal and missed some key chances and not perhaps been quite what he was when he came into the team after the World Cup. Um, how did you think the... Trossard Martinelli switch up felt like Trossard was more central, but the goal shows the switch up. Um, how do you think it worked for us, Neil? 
I thought he went very well, personally. Um, Eddie's just not been um, – he's been doing a lot of good stuff, uh, but I, at the end of the day, he's I, – I, I, this is a different side to see between Eddie and Jesus. Jesus were, was being kind of a little bit um, criticised for not putting the ball in the net, but I think he does a lot of work around the area and he does a hell – he breaks up a lot of defences in a very unexpected, unorthodox way. Whereas Eddie does a little bit of that, but I don't think he's on quite the level, whereas he probably is a better, maybe a slightly better poacher. However, he's not been poaching or he hasn't been scoring. And I just felt that we needed, I actually felt that we needed to change it. So I wasn't actually surprised. I was I was actually quite pleased. Um, I still would call for Martinelli being in the middle and Trossard being on the left. And as, it, as you just mentioned, as it transpired, that's how the goal pound out anyway, because they switched. Um, but I felt that uh, it works very well. Surprisingly, um, James, if you saw it, old Danny on the match of the day was actually applauding tr- that move. He thought it was a stroke of genius, and he thought Trossard did really well as well. And I was like, what? He, he, from last time hearing Shearer saying, we're going to win the Prem, and now Danny's applauding something Arsenal have done. I'm like, am I, what's going on here? Have I jumped into a parallel universe? Uh, but then obviously you saw the officiate and then you realise that no. you're not. So uh, we're, we're just undeniable, <laughs> Neil. We're just undeniable, Neil. You know, we're just we're that good. You can't. <laughs> it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, you can't You can't slag us off. We're, we're brilliant. You can't do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I thought he did really well. I mean, he, 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 he's... He did a he did a, he did a little bit of hold up play. So I mean, I mean, you guys would probably think that he's it was more like a number nine or a false nine or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm so rubbish with things like this, but yeah, I mean, I'm guessing that's what you would call it. But I've, I've noticed there was a couple of times where he would start from a little bit deeper. He'd get hold of the ball and he would use it very very cleverly. Um, and as soon as he made that through pass, effective through pass, not like anything negative. He would then move forward and get himself in a great position uh, around the penalty box, and you know, be there for anything that could uh, potentially, um, you know, lead to an attack on goal. And I just think his movement was very good. Um, the fact that he's, I think he's played in that position before. Am I? I may be wrong. Um, so it's not like it's anything uh, new to him. And I just, I just felt that he's carried on from where he started with us. He's just. He's just slotted in very nicely into the team. Um, he's, I think he's quite a clever footballer. And, and I think um, the partnership between him and Martinelli isn't, isn't a bad one at all. And I think it's given us another dimension, another option, which is fantastic when you think that Jesus is probably, what, two, three weeks away, maybe, um, if that. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have our full strength front lineup back in. And with ESR on the bench, I mean, holy Holy God, we've got a lot of options galore. So, and I think you're right. I, I've got a feeling it was experimentation more than a knock. Um, and the fact that he let Eddie come on in the end anyway, um, afterwards, so that was the only thing I, I've said it on the group. I was quite surprised at the substitution with, with Trossard coming off because I don't think he'd had a bad game. Um, I thought he'd, he'd offered a lot. He was, he was creating chances, of course, which we'll talk about. What a goal, yeah. which wasn't given. Yeah, he was, he was very beautiful. lively, I thought, yeah. What a beautiful goal. For for, for Mr. Lineker to tweet and say a Leicester fan. On, live, on TV, a Leicester fan, that I'm not quite sure why that was reversed, that decision. Mm-hmm. There's quite a lot, really. Um, however, it wasn't given. And I just love the fact that what you said off air, Jack, that that didn't drop. And we still just carried on. Yeah, that was the big and thing. It was a hard, and it was a hard-fought 1-0 victory. Yeah. You know, I was expecting a bigger score because I know that Leicester play a bit of football and it would have given us opportunities. We did have opportunities. That's where maybe we weren't at our clinical best. But I thought overall we controlled, well, I mean, the stats show it anyway. But we had full control of the game, save maybe seven to ten minutes mm-hmm. where they might have had a little bit of a spell. We controlled the game. Um, we done very well. 
the only thing that the only thing was slightly disappointing was there weren't more goals, but at the end, it, it was academic because we didn't need them. And the most important thing is the win. So I was I was very pleased with the switch up, and I was very pleased with the team's performance overall. Yeah, agree with that. And I, I just think, um, yeah, it was a really controlled game, and that might play into <clears throat> might play into um, you know why we play Trossard centrally. You know, James, um, we we were this is the lowest xG against the team has recorded expected goals um, since the data has been given in two thousand and seventeen. You can't get much lower than zero point zero one xG. So despite the fact we only had ten shots on goal and not tons of those on target, um. And we probably could have had more. Um, I think a lot of the reasons we didn't have more was the key moments we had were either taken away from us because of a referee indecision or a borderline offside, which would have heightened our XG drastically and probably ended up in a two or three nil win, which this game was. So I think it slightly looks negatively, believe it or not, in our f- I- I- against us. But do you think the because I, James, I likened this game to the Chelsea away game. I felt I hadn't seen control from Arsenal in a 90-minute period. I'm sure I've seen it since then to a degree. But really overall, you could argue, you know, Forest at home and things like that. But in a an away game like this where you expect the team to be coming at you, um, I felt it was 80, 85 minutes of full control. Do you think, James, that the, the, the strike partnership and the way it was interchangeable and, like Neil said, Trossard being able to drop deep a little bit more and us not playing balls in the air quite as much, do you think any of that played into the fact that we were just able to suffocate and retain quicker? I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. I think I think you're spot on. And do you know what? If you actually read all the numbers and everything like you said there, it's the most lopsided one nil you'll ever see because the score line makes you feel like it was close and edgy, wasn't it? But we were so dominant. I mean, that first half, I would put that with any half of football that we've played this season. Just we didn't, just there was, there was no end product to it. Because it was like, there, there was a point there, weren't there, where we, I think, was it 86 or 87% possession the commentator said we had? It was like a swarm, just everybody. And, um, I, 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 I don't know if you're going to touch on like individual players in a bit later, so I don't want to, you know, jump in or whatever. But for for, for me, it was just Granite Xhaka first half, and it's been very, you know, it's it's like a pattern's starting to emerge with the guy. Just everything's falling off him, or he just runs into it, and then the touch, the ball rolls away. And there was a few there in that first half. I can pinpoint two of them where he had the time and the space to unleash what you know that Granite Xhaka can unleash. But I don't know if it's a lack of confidence or something with him at the moment, but he just looked for the out ball every time. And I was, I I don't know, for me, that's not the Xhaka I know. The Xhaka I know would hit and score at least one of them. So I don't know what's happening with him lately, but um, no, that, that, that first half was so, so dominant. And you talk about the Trossard and the, uh, Martinelli there, yeah, that, you know, like Neil's mentioned there, Eddie has been a poacher and a goal scorer and he's got us out of a tricky situation. When the Jesus injury happened, everyone was going, oh my God, and to still not really drop from where we were, considering how big that player's been for us. Okay, maybe his goal numbers, Jesus isn't up there, but everything else he does. Trossard is more of that link player. You know, he can play as a 10, he can play out wide and he let Martinelli and that that confused Leicester. You could see, especially first half as well, there were times where Leicester's defence was confused because of the way they were just swapping around the whole time. They didn't know the mark, yeah. Exactly. And the goal, like Neil mentioned as well, like Murphy said, is brilliant because Trossard completely drags out that, you know, the the guy was like a crane and a skyscraper, weren't he, that suit? He's massive. But he completely dragged him out, let Martinelli through. And, you know, they they always say it, don't they? And I saw Paul Merson said it as well yesterday. Henri-esque finish from uh, Gary Martinelli. It is an amazing finish on the run, though, because he's basically falling because he's going at such a speed. And the way he opens his body up is is because if you watch it just before he hits it, there's only really one place he can put it, isn't there, James? Sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, no. It's a, it's a, you know, <laughs> we get robbed of one beautiful goal, but we still score another. And like you mentioned, the timing of it is absolutely superb. You know, we like you said, it was nil nil, and like we've mentioned, old Arsenal <laughs> would have felt sorry for themselves and probably put their head down there, but this lot. 
You know, we, we, we were all talking on the WhatsApp going, oh, bloody hell, not again, not one of these days again. And what was it, 46 seconds later? Oh, we don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we've scored, we've we scored now. See. Yeah. That's exactly and, what um, we want to see. And then as much as I appreciate the attacking and the flowing side of it, like you mentioned again as well, the control in that second half was absolutely fantastic. Got to shout out Gabriel, man. The def- you know, defender Gabriel. What a unit. I thought he was so good second. Yeah. I mean, I thought he was good in the first half as well. But what a play, what a play. every Because we've been caught, haven't we, lately, the last couple of games through, via the long ball. And as soon as they brought on step toe, they were like, right, we're going to try and pump it long and get him in there and get Barnes in behind. And, and Gabriel, every header, I swear it was like, no, no, no again. And um, the way he judges the distance with Saliba as well, it's it's brilliant, mate. They're yeah. so good at it. They're so good at it. There was one again as well with Saliba, a bit like uh, the Aubameyang one, like you mentioned in that Chelsea game. You look and you think, He's got a head start on you there, Saliba. But he always gets back. <laughs> he always gets back. Yep. Times it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're developing into a great partnership. I heard they had a little a little ruck at the end as well. And I love all that. Love all. Fantastic. You win 1 0, 0.01 XG, and our two centre backs are having a ruck. Yeah okay, we might be serious again. That's what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? So I love that. Um, but I agree with what, what you said there. I mean, really, I mean, we can't talk about the first half without talking about two referee instances, and I don't really want to make it a PGFG, um, MOL, corruption, banging podcast every week. But it is getting to the point where it's a bit ridiculous. I think my main argument here, Neil, is if you're going to give the Ben White one, and Ben White's reaction is is sort of a, you know, kind of like maybe I did have hold of his arm or something reaction. But if you're going to give that, which happens probably 50 times on the pitch that doesn't get called, um, if you're going to give that, firstly, um, we I can name two instances off the top of my head. Uh, Ramsdale earlier in the season, where Doug, I think it's Douglas Sui just backing his whole body into him so the ball goes into the goal goal given um, Leno at Brentford last season first game of the season backing into him ball goes into the goal given um, so if you're going to do that um, you've got to be consistent with it because that doesn't get called ever like ever certainly not for for us secondly if you're going to give what is effectively a, a you know no one even knew what they were appealing um, for what the referee was looking at the goalkeeper kind of had a hint of it when the referee started to think about it but um, you cannot not give what is effectively a manhandling of Saka Tet five minutes later, same half, same game, same game of football. If you're going to make, you know, feather dusting contact, um, a, a, you know, of you know, a clear and obvious error, then I'm sorry, you, you can't, you, Saka's just been pulled down to the ground. So I think my issue here, Neil, is if he gives one, he's got to flip. We've got to get one of those decisions, and how we don't get one of those decisions is absolutely disgraceful, and that's my issue. What about you? Just sum it up. So, what? What? What you? What's that shirt you're wearing? Shirt. Yeah. They look at that. Yeah, that's it. That's that's. I'm sorry, the corruption I, I, you know, point is getting more and more. Yeah, the amount of times I've been chastised for saying it's not bias. Other teams are suffering as well. Sorry, I don't care about other teams. I care about our team. I'm not interested in any other team in the Premiership apart from ours. I only focus on ours. If, if if others feel unjust, that's up to them to tweet or talk about it. I'm not interested in Arsenal. I, I I only watch the Arsenal, and that's all I see. And I'm sorry. How many times this season have I seen our players bear hugged in the penalty area, and nothing happens? Bear hugged. There was one that I can't get out of my head. It's like one one where Shaka is literally being bear hugged so hard he can't even move. Well, when the ball is coming into the pen box. Oh no, but that's all right. But little little feather touch, you know, on, on the gear goalkeeper and oh no, we can't give that amazing goal because what an amazing goal it was. Oh no, we can't let him ask like that, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, as you said, Saka's just literally rugby towel to the floor. Nah, nah, nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. I don't think they even reviewed it's, it. It's, it it's an absolute joke. Um, and, you know, you you... Do you know what? We were just mentioning, or you guys were just talking about how our heads didn't drop, old Arsenal, our heads wouldn't drop. But you know what? After going through that, 
it wouldn't surprise me if their heads dropped. The fact that they didn't, and we still called, scored a beautiful goal, and I've always said scoring a goal before half time or just before and or just after half time is the best ever time to score because either one will disrupt the team talk of the opposition manager or it will undo the team talk of the opposition manager because they're like, oh God, we just we held them to nil nil, and unless we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and then all of a sudden, bang, the goal goes in. So the fact that our heads didn't drop and we did that is great. It's a great testament to us. I've been saying all season, the mentality and the attitude is a winning championship one to have. And it's 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 so great to, to, to see. But these refereeing des- decisions, guys, I'm sorry. I, I, I feel very, very, as an Arsenal fan, very hard done by. It's too often. We've had two apologies, actual official apologies. We've made a mistake. We've had that. Neil, if if, if, yeah, apolo- if and, apologies were points, we'd be clearer, City. Now, we'd be well, so clear. We, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that. Well, that that would have that 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 would have been five extra points just from those two games where he's that Mason has made blunder. Well, I say it's deliberate. I'm sorry if that's controversial. I think it's deliberate. But anyway, was it more than Mustafi was during his Arsenal era? I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. We would have been clear there. And then, you know, today could have all gone wrong. We could have dropped points today as a result of it. So that would have been three clear-cut games. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, imagine talking about these two instances if we didn't win it. Like exactly. so I, Every tweet I'm seeing, I'm kind of doing it with a smile because I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, it does matter. It does, but it, but it doesn't, doesn't matter to the point where we have to, tomorrow we can just think, ah, we had a great weekend because we won again. And no, that's can, I love can, I just, can I just ask you both? Because obviously, the, the, this this is my point of contention with it. Obviously, I I, I think it's soft to begin with. Um, but mm. my my point that I look at is I don't feel that moment impacts the goal because no. the fa- the phase I'm like they keep going on about oh th- there's been instances earlier in the season you know when um to shell and Conte had the you know we, oh we could all have a push at a pull like Carl Froch and Gross did that oh we could all have a push at a pull mate you know they were like we can't go back to that Havertz incident because it's too it's too long ago in the phase of play for me that's another phase of play because yeah. the cor- the all corners in and we the, cor- it, yeah. the corners in it's come back out and Jack has had the time. They've had time to close Jacker down. They haven't. We've laid it back. There's still time for them to come out to Trossard if they want to. He's done the shimmy and then smashed it. I'm, I, for me, I'm like... Who, was the goalkeeper impeded when the ball was struck? No. He had his... Because oh, well, when they were saying they were varring it, I thought they were looking at an offside. Yes, and I was like, are. no, it's your players that are in the way, not ours. Mm. It's his own players stand, you know, like I said, the skyscraper and the cranes in front of him. So he yeah. couldn't. <laughs> so and then when they were like, oh, no, it's a hold from White. And again, like you said, Jack, I think he did sort of concede that, yeah, I have held him. He, he didn't make it, you know. Well, he, it was he almost like, you know, keepers trying to get him out of the way. White's got his arms here and he's like, I'm just going to yeah. hold my arms here. I'm not going to move him. Yeah. Jo- yeah. He, he, like, the fact that it gets called is 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 laughable yes. based on what you see in the box, and, and yeah. that's the issue. Yeah, and and again, it comes down to what we've said all all year about the consistency. I I I'm with both of you. How can you not? If you're saying that Ben White has held the goalkeeper, this guy has held Saka like at waist and then fell down with him as well. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. I'm like, you, you, I'm like, White's held the keeper for what seconds? Yeah. This guy has held Saka for <laughs> exactly. And, and, and from Ugh. that moment onwards, my worry wasn't as much the team because we have seen in fairness this season that the team is showing really good maturity against decisions, right? We've had, for years, we've had decisions go against us and we've gone, oh, we're going to lose our heads here. We're going to start coming down to their level, starting to get in brawls, moaning at the ref. We didn't do any of that um, in this game. But what I knew about it was if the ref could make a game of this, he was going to make a game of it. And that was my concern because sometimes you can't be foot perfect luckily in this game we were basically pretty much perfect other than the fact we didn't have full cutting edge in the final third but I do think the referee decisions cost us there you know you you are almost looking at a 2 or 3 nil game and going 
really easy and we're not so I, I think it's hard to say that it, you can make the argument that oh Trossard centrally the negative of it was maybe we didn't get as many clear cut chances but I don't really feel that was the case and I also think I think Leicester were very negative they, they got 0.01 xg they got 19 shots away at Man U last week I think You've got to also argue that teams are just playing against us in a completely different way to what they're playing against the rest of the league, right? I mean, you could argue Man City have a similarity because they play in a similar style. But other than that, people go against United going, we're going to get some chances here. And they go for that. They go against us going, let's see how long we can hold them. And that's the difference. Do you know what I mean? What the worry is, is you're playing against teams that are fighting for their life, clearly need points, and they're still going... Uh, let's just sit back and not even get beyond the halfway line. And you're like, what? The? And it's Brendan Rodgers, who's never, who, who knows nothing about defending. He, he has no clue how to do it. No idea. And and he's still doing it. And that's my, I'm watching it going, you're just really negative. Do you know what I mean? The, the really only exception, negative. Jack, was Zunai last week. Yes. And um, he has no ability to be able to do it. He, like none he doesn't know how to hold anything like he doesn't does he he just plays the same way he's like he wants to play out the back even if he's got <laughs> I know we're laughing but if he was here he'd agree with Jack that's the thing he'd go yeah he's no, no, yeah. I'm not disagreeing by laughing. I'm, I agree with it. Right, right. No, no, but it's, it's, I was thinking about, I was like, oh, you know, why don't we create as much? But yeah, man, it's, it's hard. And two banks of four, not moving. Uh, we go one nil up. There's still two banks of four, not moving. And I'm like, Wow, you know, this is, uh, you, you know, they, they literally won't budge. And the only time they really started to try to do something was when they brought Tillemans on. And I never wish injury upon anyone, but obviously he rolled his ankle. And, but I was like, yeah, see, that's the, you should have tried to, to, to expand on your game a little bit earlier, though. You shouldn't be waiting yeah, but, for you know, I think, stuff. isn't this, isn't, isn't this what you're saying? Isn't it just a testament to how dangerous everyone else thinks we are? Oh, yeah, front. absolutely. Super dangerous absolutely. that there's, they're, they're actually not dangerous. They're scared. Yeah. They're yeah, scared. Yeah, 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 and that's yeah. the biggest point. They're yeah. fearful that, oh yeah. my God, we do anything to come out a little bit. We're going to get wallops. We're going to get smacked. So, and I think also another thing that's changed, which is all likened to the old era of good, of Wenger is we can break so fast and so and transition so quickly now where we were struggling with that for a little while, where we were doing too many tough passes, too many. We do, we still sometimes guilty of, you know, trying to walk the ball in the net and, you know, the extra uh, pass, yeah. taking that extra pass. But I think our speed in terms of attacking uh, or counter-attacking is tremendous. And I think it's the fear factor. They're all so scared. They're like trying to defend and thinking we can't risk opening up that, that extra, little extra. If we do, we're going to get hit hard because they've seen a lot, a big trend of our season as how fast we started off, you know, literally from the, from the get go. And we've actually hit teams with goals very yeah. quickly. And yeah. I think that's what they've looked at and thought we can't allow that because we'll be out there, we'll be blown out the game with it before it even starts. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. it's a great testament to us. No, it is. It is. And um, another thing that bugged me beyond those two, what I, I, I felt were shocking referee, referee decisions, when you look at them as a collective, that, that it just doesn't, it can't make sense. Like those two together cannot make sense. But also, I mean, they, they made 14 fouls to our nine, but we got one book and they got none. So the, the issue there again is you're watching it going, we got booked, Martinelli got booked for, for, for his first challenge and the only challenge he made basically in the whole game. And I've seen four or five exactly the same identical and he's given them a warning and I'm like, it doesn't make sense. And, and the problem with that is you're, you're, you're not, you're not um, justifying. You're not giving credit to a team that is actually trying to play football here. We're trying to play football. We're trying to attack. We get pulled down and you're, you're going, you're giving them a warning. They have one attack in 50 minutes and you're going, yeah, book him for that. I see what you're trying to do. And I'm like, that doesn't add up. That doesn't make any sense. That's not the way, that's not in the purity of the game. That's not what it is because it's much harder to play a game and attack a game than it is to hold a team. It's much, much harder because you're basically just chasing people and uh, as opposed to really try to be imaginative and creative. So I, I don't think it's good for the game and I think the English referees are just so far behind. Um, so, that, that, so that, far that's, behind. I, know, I know Neil made a great point saying that I only care about Arsenal and everything else and that, that is Neil. I'm, I'm the same but on the coverage that I watched yesterday they were showing all the highlights of all the other games as they were happening and I'll tell you what Aston Villa Stonewall pen from Pickford just, you know, like he does. Rush of blood, completely clatters it. A bit like how Edison clattered um, Anketia the other day in our game. 
It's the it's exactly the same sort of situation. Doesn't get given as a pen. And then Forrest, Brennan Johnson gets, it was Neil Neil at the time. He gets a pull completely like the guys. It's the most obvious, like yank and pull down. And okay, he goes down it very easily, but find me a winger that wouldn't the minute they fill a pool like that. They they all do. And that doesn't get given as a pen. And do you, do you know what? Like Forrest at Neil Neil, if they scored, they probably wouldn't have got pumped 4-1 or whatever it was yesterday that they lost. And Ball okay, Villa, yeah. yeah, I know Villa completely dominated Everton. So that's a good, you know, sort of sign for us going into Wednesday. But th- 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 this, this is the thing, Neil, that all of them are just not fit for purpose. And we claim that we're the best league in the world. You know, all the other leagues in Europe are calling us the Super League now because of what's being spent. And I attribute that to an absolute donkey that's in charge at Chelsea. But um, do you know what I mean? I'm like, what? what is stopping us from going now? Do you know what? You know, we, 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 we've, we've had foreign players now for God knows how long. Why don't we get the foreign refs in? Why don't we get... Uh, <laughs> Or just complete for me, like I keep, I've said it the whole time since VAR come in. I think the people that do the VAR refing should be completely separate from the actual physical refs, and they shouldn't know who they are because I, I they where they're having the relate. It, I I do feel because you get it when in your own work at certain times, you know, you have you go, oh, oh wait a minute, he done something for me last week. So I'll bail him out here. Do you know what I mean? That they don't want to make each other look silly because he knows in a couple of weeks' time he's probably going to do the VAR for his game. And he's like, oh, he'll make me look a mug because I've yeah. made him look at... You... They shouldn't have any relationship with each other. They shouldn't know who they are. Why can't you have ex-players in that room? Why, why can't you have ex-players yeah, exactly, in that room? Exactly. All these ex-players doing commentary, they all don't know anything. They're talking rubbish. Chuck one of them in the room. They'll do it for free. I bet you they do it for free. They'll go, hey, instead of being in the show with Jamie Carragher and Jamie Redknapp and all these dipsticks, you can go down to the VAR room. Today, it's your rotation on the VAR room. Chuck them in there. They'll do it. They'll do it. They're getting paid the same, be in the VAR room. And you've got a little bit of an interaction like a like a rugby game where you hear. But why can't you hear it? Why The lack of transparency immediately starts to create conspiracy theories in people's heads because the less you know, the more you ponder and the more you question, right? And especially when the decisions are so inconsistent. And, you know, I mean, the, the basis that we should get foreign refs in is, is a great one. But the fact that they're not even... It's spread amongst the country, um, and they're from one specific region that just happen to have, you know, one, two of, the, you know, the biggest clubs now in the country coming from there. Um, is 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 enough to really, really question it? And you have to question what they're being paid, how they're being looked after. Because if every time you lose a Lee Mason, you have to go down to the next door where Lee Mason came from and go, hey yeah, mate, uh, mate, we need a replacement for Lee Mason. Can you come in on the same flipping street? You're you're then that's a problem, right? It's a it's a problem. I don't have to go into what the problem is. But I think I think if you mic, is a problem. If you mic them up, they will come. They will change because they can't well, hide. Then they will. If they're Mike, mic'd Michael, up, it will expose them exactly. completely. Yeah, Michael, was, Michael, that, Michael yeah. said this ages ago. He said we should be able to hear what is being said, of course. and Absolutely. we should be able to hear, hear, hear the discussion between the referee on the pitch and the VAR room. Everything should be transparent because what have they got to hide? Because yeah. you're right, Jack, that does book. You do get theories. And that's where I was coming from, James. I was, I'm not oblivious to other decisions going wrong. What I meant to say was... Oh, no, yeah, I yeah. No, no, I when I personally treat, t- tweet it, I get chastised. I don't care. They go, yeah, but it's happening everywhere. But that's for other, their fans to sort out. I can only speak about our club right. because that's what affects mm-hmm. me. And mm-hmm. actually, from that, I, I know the, uh, the you know the couple of examples that you quoted, and with, this is with all due respect to those other clubs. However, for us, it's more important because we are. That could be the difference between lifting the prem and not. Exactly. It could be the difference between first exactly. and second. Yeah. Right. So it's so much more prominent. I'm, I'm not. I'm not poo pooing their bad decisions, and I feel sorry for them as well. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not. But it's more significant in in that from a from that point of view, um, and I and I and with all due respect again to all the other clubs, I do feel we've had the lion's share, and that's over the oh, that's course. over years. Of course, we, that's over the course of years. Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, you're spot on. But um, yeah, let's draw a line. I, I don't know. I mean, we've said what we need to say. We unfortunately we have to do this more often than than, than we should because there's stuff coming up every week. But um. 
I think it's going to get worse within the running, not better for us specifically. And I think we have to show the same control, level headedness, um, and we need our experienced players to to do that. And I, I think in the second half, whilst I completely agree with James, I think Xhaka had a, a first half that's frustrated me in the last couple of weeks, where I feel like he's left in the most space constantly, and the ball breaks down with him constantly. Um, and I think they're leaving him space for reason. I think they're leaving him space for reason because he's all to me. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, there's room for you now. And I, I, I do just start to think in my head, you know, you know, Fabio Vieira at Smith Rowe. But I think second half, when we were leading, I think Xhaka showed his experience. I think other players did as oh, well. He like was, Zinchenko and Gabriel. He, he was, was excellent. Yes, he was he excellent, was. Jack. Yeah, he he, he's, so, very, he's very good. I know we keep going on about he can't turn and he can't do that. But he, when he does do his little where he gets his back that way and he draws yeah. the fouls. He yeah, just breaks the game. Yeah, it, it slows the game down. You know, yeah. Like Neil mentioned earlier, they had a good period of about eight to ten minutes there. Yeah. And he was completely like, no. And again, it's that lovely word that we said, control. It's yep. just control. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, no. for, for, for people that have come out and chastised our club on, and, and our manager about game management, we're really improving in that aspect now. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I don't know if that's because of, I mean, um, again, got a shout out. I don't know if you saw the video of before the game on the concourse. It looked like it was old print works, you know, the raves. You couldn't see, they were letting the flare off in the, <laughs> where all the see this video. No, oh, it's a let, yeah, giving it, you know, doing, I saw the post doing, game yeah, one, obviously. They're doing the uh, Super Mick Arteta chant and all you, you can't see anything, mate, because someone's let the flare off in the bloody, I mean, um, Probably going to get in big trouble if they find out who it is, but it's a it's a brilliant video, and wow. uh, yeah, you you didn't realise that we were playing away because our fans completely. I mean, they've got the inflatable knockers that they have for the kids to make noise at Leicester, and so mm. they've not really got a good atmosphere anyway because it's artificial because they've got bloody props to try and make noise. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, and I don't know if it's because they're feeding off the energy from us or whatever. But we're, we're, we're just so much better in every department at the moment. It's it's fantastic to see. And long may it continue. Like you said, we've got a big run and we know what these lot are like, but we just got, to, you know, the refs during the Invincibles were arguably as worse as these ones. You had yeah. ones there that couldn't keep up with the speed of the game. Yeah. Let, oh, alone, yeah, let, alone, let alone worrying about what they're going to do with technology. No, these absolutely. lot just did not meet the physical requirements yeah, <laughs> to yeah, ref yeah, games, let alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. You you had a few a few a few guys that wouldn't move out of centre circle. I remember, but yeah. um, no, you're right. But yeah, let's draw a line under it. Neil, I want to talk about our two signings. I think uh, Jorginho he had the most touches in this game, other than Martinelli, surprisingly. But he had the most passes. I think I think Martinelli um, had. Sorry, he had more touches than Martinelli. Martinelli had a higher pass in accuracy, but very involved. I think this was the game for him, as was last week. They, Leicester aren't super athletic in midfield. ever. are. Nah, that's maybe all they are in midfield. They're, they're full of athleticism. So I'll be interested to see if he goes with that again. But um, I'll t- talk him up at the end of the game. Um, Neil saying that, that, you know, we had to pivot in January and it was important for us to pivot because we can't let uh, um, a transfer window, you know, um, we can't fail in the transfer window. We have to be able to pivot and move and, and, and adjust. And when you look at the likes of uh, Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, for example, who supposedly wanted uh, the guy at Real Madrid to Shemeni and, and, and Bellingham, and he didn't get anyone in, in the summer in central midfield, kind of laughed about it and said, I don't know, why, why do people think we need one? And now they've got 37-year-old James Milner and Jordan Henson being run over like a train every week in, in, in their midfield. I, I think it was a really, um, well, early signs of that it was a really intelligent way to pivot and two players that could provide us with um, instant impact into a team and, and, and instant experience. Now, I just wonder what you think of their performances over the last few games and what they might be able to offer to us for the rest of the season with two games a week now coming pretty thick and fast. Um, superb signings, astute, clever. And reasonably priced, so fabulous. Uh, I was obviously we saw Trossard first. He he, he just uh, took took to it like he'd been at the club forever. He was fantastic on that in, in his position. He made an immediate impact with the very first cameo. 
and he's done very well. Well, and I think because of that, he earned a starting place. And you can't say anything much more. He's just he gives us so much extra on on that side. He done well as as we've talked about earlier in the game yesterday, or for you still maybe today, Jack. And um, I think what he'll offer us, and what both of them will offer us, is the title at the end of the season. That's what they'll offer us. I can't really say anything more than that. Um, and Jorginho, I know you guys have mentioned quite rightly that maybe when he's off the ball, his positioning might be a little bit, you know, not so great. He might be a little bit slower. Uh, he might not. He's not. He's got the physical presence of the parties of this world, which is which is fair, fair enough. But what he does offer, which is out, outstanding, is his on the ball play and his intelligence, his vision. Um, the fact that we've got him doing that, Odegaard doing that. Vieira can do that. Um, I think I said it in the last book. Most of our players, all on the WhatsApp, but most of our players can do that now. It's creative, creativity zero, where two, three years ago, to abundance, maybe too much so now, uh, in, our, in this team. And both Jorginho and Trossard's main plus is for Trossard, um, the experience, his, uh, his, his, his involvement with Brighton, He's played up front and he's scored against the big teams. He's not scared to play. He's not fearful of anyone. He takes players on when he's on the ball. Uh, Jorginho is a winner in Europe. He's got the experience again. And if we had gone for our choice to young, inexperienced, I mean, I, I've, I mean, Chelsea are pretty rubbish anyway, but I've heard that Mudrick isn't doing maybe as well as everyone it's thought. devastating, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. But you see, the thing is, he hasn't got the experience that um, uh, you know our players have got that have come in and and while we may think I think Trossard I mean even well I think they're kind of similar age aren't they Trossard and Jorginho I might be wrong or Jorginho might be a bit older yeah a couple but of what, years older but, it, yeah. but even if even if it is only for this short time that's what we needed let's 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 do things bit by bit we want to win the prem first yeah well I mean let, we, let's and, be honest if 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 they are successful in the short term yeah. Well, None of us are going to compare, care about the long term. If, if, no, if they're truly successful no. in the next six months, we're not going to compare at all, care Jack, at all Jack, about the Jack, year after many, that, really. How many, for how many years have we bought for the future? And I was so getting so sick of it. I'm sick of the future. While we're planning for the future, all these other teams are going, you know, why acres away from us, mm. so many years ahead of us, light years ahead of us. And within within a few months, our Twitter has close that gap significantly to the fact that we're actually top of the tree. And it's done because we are buying for now, for the future. And the problem is our future is secure because I don't care what anyone says. We've got one of the best academies that, that, that they can be. And there's some great players that are going to come through. We've got, and the other thing, which is something you have got barked on about for so long, our loan movements have been so clever so clever. I mean, even Laconga's doing brilliantly at Palace. I mean, God, you know, I like him in there a Coutinho lot, is out this world where he's gone. Look how well it fared Saliba. Look how well it even fared Nelson. I mean, they can roll the ESR as well when he went on. Mark, Mark Kinney and, scored his first goal yesterday. Correct. Course, look at it. Point. Look at it. Even Tavares, good finish. Great finish. Even yeah. Tavares is doing well. Tavares is doing well as well. You know, they all are. And, and you're, you're thinking, so we've got that part of it right. As James said earlier, Every department, the away yeah. fans are made. Well, the away fans have kind of always been good, but they're even better now. All I could hear in that stadium was the away fans. Couldn't even hear the Leicester fans. Yeah, you know our home fans. Nothing much else to say. Absolutely brilliant in the Emirates. So everything is working perfectly, uh, and and I just think that um, so we've got the future secured. So we have to buy for now, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, and Trossard yeah. and Jorginho are going to take us to the title. Thank you. Because the alternative, right? Let's say if Madrid and Saicedo were, were our were our first choice in the summer, the alternative would then and I make this argument to John, who says we we've gone cheap and the owners aren't spending money again, which I I don't think you can argue at this point, even if you dislike the owners. But my argument was: Would you rather have gone for your second or third choice if you think your first choice is still going to be possible in the future, um, and spent just the same amount of money? When you know it's six months down the line, you may be able to get who you really, really want. 
or do you want to go for the 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 the, the next option in terms of building the base of the squad and and and, and filling it in a different way? And, and it looked to me like because of how quickly we shifted, we were very aware that if this if Plan A didn't work, Plan B was going to be very very different because it was very quick on Trossard. It was very pretty well. It's pretty quick on Jorginho after the Saicedo bids failed, right? Um, most passes, James. Um, most successful passes, most touches, most recoveries, most tackles made, most jewels won for Jorginho yesterday. I just wonder, how do you think we're going to use Jorginho now that party is fit again? Um, do you think well, it'll be a straight rotation game on game <laughs> because we can't play party twice a week? He yeah. talks about Jorginho being a winner. Mm. Party, the, I've, I've always had a little bit of a worry with party in that he left the season that Atletico Madrid won the league. He joined the season after they won the league. He never won the league with them. I think he won the Europa League with them too, though. Yes, maybe. I believe so. But he yeah. never won a domestic title with them, which was interesting to me. I was like, hmm, interesting. Probably nothing to read into it, but I just wonder what you think. The rotation, I know we talked a little bit last week about them both playing together, and we, they did for a little bit in this game. Um, I'm not sure I see it from the start much, but well, what's your thoughts? Yeah, for me, that's one of the biggest compliments that I can give Jorginho is the fact that when Thomas Partey come on, he did not move him to the six and move Jorginho to the eight. He kept Jorginho at the base. Maybe because he, you know, okay, we were quite comfortable at the time and everything, but he still did not change that system. No. He, 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 you know, he left Thomas Partey as an eight to go and, so for that to me is a party looked a little confused to me but yeah right, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh but w w we've spoken about the potential of what could Jorginho and party do together so I wouldn't write it out I wouldn't write sorry I wouldn't write it off sorry is mm. what I mean so I'll wait and see on that one but I do believe yeah they're probably just going to be in the rotation and uh again I'll keep saying it but Neil makes a great great point there and you know what at the time I was a bit aggrieved and a bit cheesed off at Ludric and Sacido. But now, you know, <laughs> hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. I wasn't angry at Trossard signing. I've actually, you know, championed Trossard for quite a while. I've, I've always liked the oh, player. You, you mentioned um, him last summer. Yeah. 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 And, yes. um, you know, for me, having the guy from Shakhtar come out, and say Arsenal were never in the race. He was always going to go to Chelsea because Chelsea. we knew Chelsea would give him wages that Arsenal were never going to give him. And he's all about how much can he get paid. So Not now I'm price. like, okay, well, that's it. I'm like, I've gone from really liking and wanting you to realising you're just another, you know, you're just a younger Aubameyang. You just yeah. want the money, you know, you want the money, you want your wraparound car, you want to go on your TikTok singing along to your rap songs. Mercury. Yes, yeah, exactly. And then, and then the Saicedo one, if you look at it, they, they were like, we're not selling it. Even if you gave us 120 million, we're not selling him now. And Neil makes a great point there. If we did get them both and we drop them in in this run-in, in this high-pressure scenario, would we have got the results that we want? And I don't think we would. And I'm glad, like Neil said again, that we've got two men there. They're not boys, they're men. Hmm. Because this group, I think, need more experience. You know, Jacker was the most really experienced. Okay, Party's there as well. But he, like you said, how often does he play? And then El Nini's another one as well. Again, how often does he play? But you've got two players there. Okay, Trossard hasn't seen it, done it like Jorginho has. But... Look at the reaction when he did score his goal. Sinchenko straight away runs to, he's doing that, yeah. you know, they're all doing his celebration with it. He ain't been there that long. They yeah. love him. And Jorginho, look at last week. All the, Xhaka ran from the bench to go with him. How long did it take Xhaka to get a song and how long did it take Jorginho to get a song? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. All of them love him straight away. And that goes to, and I mean, the manager, as always, we know Arteta's like Jorginho for a very, very long time. He was the one that, you know, before he went to Chelsea, City were, he was begging Pep we need to get this guy. He's the one. We need him for us. We need him for us. And they lost out to Chelsea. You know, he went and decided to go to Chelsea instead. And I think it was either you or Mike on Mike's show, Neil, that said he's won everything but the Prem. 
he's done them all and yeah. he's hungry. That's the one he wants. You know, he's hungry and he wants to complete the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah I'm, I am. I am. I know that, like your brother said, people are getting angry that we're not spending the money and getting these players over the line. But like we mentioned, we have pivoted, and we've and got the spending two, will come exactly. And we've got two two players that might edge us over the line. Well, sorry, not might will. Sorry, Neil, will will edge us over the line to win the league. And we've got another one. We ain't even seen him play yet. Yeah, we don't know yeah. how good this other one is. He yeah, even, definitely for the future. Maybe, yeah. maybe, 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 maybe yeah. he um, gets the start against Lisbon. You don't know, yeah. but we ain't even seen this lad come on yet. So. Yeah. Yep, yep. Lots, Sporting Lisbon. Lots to look forward to. In Europa League. Um, yeah, just to touch back on on the... Uh, now, you, now you make great points on those. I think they've been two really shrewd sign, signings so far. They've settled really well, like you said. And uh, yeah. Georgina... I've been, hum- I have been humbled, before. Jack. I've been humbled. You yeah. know, well, well, they I, say yeah, about I, humble pie, it's uh, with Jorginho, it's humble pizza, lasagna or carbonara, isn't it? So Yeah, there you go. And, and it's I, I don't, I don't mind my Italian half. food. I don't care. So. It all sounds lovely, to be honest. Italian <laughs> food is always the best. Oh, but God, the, the, the pass is disgusting. Yeah, it's, it's filthy. Filthy. And I would say, from what I've seen, because I don't, I, I don't watch a lot of Chelsea. I mean, I do, but just laughing mostly. Um, but what from what I, I've I seen, watch their fans like, after the game, a bit like Liverpool. I watch their fans' reactions after the game. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My my little my little leprechaun friend on TikTok. I love watching him every week. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Exactly. Conor, Conor, McGr- Conor McGregor's little brother. I love him. I love yeah, him. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I think on the ball he is better than Party on the ball. Obviously. There's so much more to it, press resistance, athleticism, and, and that's where Pai really comes into his own. But but um, I think for certain games, for example, our next two games are Everton and Bournemouth. You can make a big argument that Everton are much more athletic than Bournemouth. And the game state is going to be much more, you know, when we play Bournemouth, they're going to be very compact and sitting. So you, you could argue that Jorginho would be perfect for that kind of game um, where, you know, hopefully we're penning them back. But with Everton, you know that that you know in their athleticism, you, you, it would make a lot of sense for party off the top of my head. You know, so it's but what we know about Thomas Party is we can't play him twice a week. I mean, we're, we're barely getting away with playing him once a week. So I, I think um, it's it's a shrewd signing. We said when we signed him, although we had some skepticism that we'd definitely play more than El Nenny, and, you, and you're seeing that already. Um, and he's 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 becoming a really big part of the team and um, I think I think it's good I think it's looking really good the goal was fantastic Trossard's little step over ball through the legs absolutely fantastic and um, like we already talked about Marnelli's finish after that I, I, again I was still wanting us to make I think they made probably four subs before we made one or something um but we, we don't make a lot of changes at the starting lineup and we don't make a lot of subs and we certainly don't make them early um, but we did. We brought you know a couple on Eddie on. We brought Party on. We brought Tommy Asu on late on. I think, um, and it, it it was enough again. While I felt you know all of those cameos didn't do too that, much. That was a that was a big uh, talking point on Twitter. You know, Tommy Asu coming on instead of Tierney. I'm like, and I went, well, that's. I said to people, that's the way it is now. Instead well, of bringing yeah. on a natural left back, he yep. would rather go for the right footer. And in he's the better position. He is better well, that's it. than I, 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 I said. I said to people, look at what Leicester are doing. Pumping long. I'm like, he's another one that wins every header. Yep. Sorry. Yep. And one-on-one, on one, I'd take him over him yeah. as well. I mean, it's yeah, no coincidence we played exactly. him against the best wingers, is it? So Exactly. You know, Liverpool at home, for example. I mean, I, th- I think Tierney's to no fault of his own. It's just, you know, he can't play the inverted role, really. And when we sign a left-back in the summer, which we will, it'll be an inverted one. It will be. It might be one that can go as well, but it will be primarily, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a right foot, um, an inverted one. And um, it's just it's just, a, it's just the way it is frustrating. We'll see. Maybe Tierney does feature in Europe a little bit, but I would not be surprised if he doesn't start because I, I think we have to change the way we play if he does. And I don't think Arteta wants to do that. But... Um, we, we held on. Saka had a little bit of a more quiet game. You said on Gabriel again. I thought Gabriel was fantastic. I think we should also mention, I think Zinchenko on the ball again, popping up in little spaces, you know, getting more confident in front of goals. You know, good save from the keeper from one of his shots on the edge of the box. Um, thoughts on making him captain for this game, Neil? It came from within the team. They wanted to. It's a year since um, the war started in Ukraine. And I don't need you to necessarily speak about that, but just thoughts on us, you know, 
making Zinchenko, who is definitely part of the leadership group, captain for this game, and what it means, um, what shows this squad is, you know, and how inclusive they are and how, they, you know, they really want to support, you know, each other. And Mikel Arteta alluded to the fact at the end of the game as well. Fantastic. Such a lovely, such a lovely gesture. I know in the past we were moaning that, you know, it was almost like let's draw a straw to see who captains the club. But this 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 wasn't that. This was a heartfelt, thoughtful, um, conscientious decision. I think even Martin Odegaard as captain spoke to Arteta about it from what he I did, heard. Yeah. That's what what a lovely thing to do. I mean, we all know what Martin Odegaard's all about. That um, article you guys posted on the WhatsApp group about him. I mean, it just... What a what a brilliant human being he is, um, and to to you know even discuss that with Arteta and say yeah, of course I mean it just shows it's 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 a one year anniversary of that absolutely horrific thing that's going on, um, you know it, it, it's it, I remember the, um, the vlog that um, Sinchenko did when he was playing for City, and it was so distressing to watch. I mean the guy was in it tears, is, yeah. uh, so you know what it means to him, and I think he would have worn that with pride and honour. And actually, he did a captain's role, to be fair. He had another shot as well, which was great. Uh, it was a good save. I mean, it, it, well, well, you can't really say much more. It was just a, a beautiful testament to him and to what's going on. Uh, I, you know, it's, it, it's The fact that it's had to happen is wrong because this should be going on in the first place. But it's a nice gesture from the club uh, as a whole. And I think, Odegaard and Arteta should be applauded and I'm so happy for him. And, you know, you're right. He is a leader, you know, who knows one day in the future. I mean, it, he may become captain for a while for if circumstances, you know, you know, allow that to happen. Um, and I just feel it was great. The other thing, sorry, just from there that we should mention, you may, we're going to be, you might have already planned to mention at the end was the, the passing of uh, Motto, you know, and John Motson and the, 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 uh, you know, tragedy there and the, and the, and the tragic loss. Uh, I, I was the voice of up football, the, he? Yeah, I mean, they, they did a little tribute at the beginning of match of day for him, and I was I was trying to hold not top. You know, I was I was tearing up. It was difficult not to. Um, so, just wanted to mention him. But <clears throat> yeah, I, I just love the fact that I, it's what our club stands for. Always has. We've always been at the forefront. We've always been the forerunners of this kind of thing. Always, always, always. You know, uh, reaching out to. Everyone, everyone can enjoy football. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what challenges you might have in life. Every single person should be included. And, you know, the amount of work that Arsenal Football Club have done to make, you know, even even going from the stadium to the facilities to enable that to happen, uh, to, you know, the work of the communities they do, everything, it's just been tremendous. And hats off to them. And I thought that was a great, great choice. Yeah. You, say, you, you say this as well, Neil. Um, there's the lad, isn't there? Stephen, I believe his name is, and um, he's been. Yeah, I saw that from. My, I, I, th- uh, I think. I think he. Yeah, I think he has his own little channel and everything else as well. And um, he's fought all his life. I think it's. I think he's got some kind of like liver disease or something. I'm sorry. Yeah. Apologies if I can't remember exactly what it is that he's got wrong with. Wrong with him, and he's in the ICU. And um, he's in a he's in, not in a good way at all. Uh, but Gabriel Martinelli is his favourite player, and to see that tweet, you know, that's for you, Steve. You know, he he doesn't have to do stuff like you know the players don't have to do stuff like that. But you know, as a fan base, obviously we dominate social media and everything. But I love the fact that they do check, they are receptive, and you know, we they do come out here and do things like that. It's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, and um, I think the best way you can sum that up is like what Neil said with the Sinchenko, you know, the players have decided that and everything else. And again, I go back to the Euros and what happened with Saka and there's the lovely video of, you know, the kid giving his pocket money because he felt bad for it. You know, I I don't want my pocket money this week. I want to give it to, you know, I think I want to give it to Saka because I feel like Saka deserves, you know, I want Saka to go and buy something because I saw him crying at the end of the Euro and since that's happened, look at him. He's taken all our penalties, scoring them against Big T. Do you know what I mean? He's he's gone up. We knew he'd go up a gear, but I feel like he's done that because of the fans as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, as much as we sit here and we talk about how much we love him, he loves the fact that we all love him. Yeah. 
And um, this week also announced that very, very close to to signing. And um, I think and there's people think, there's people moaning Jack that he's two hundred grand a week. What? There's too little. Well, no, that, yeah. But this is the thing. Sancho no, gets moan about Sancho's on three hundred and fifty. He's better than him. And and he never played in this league. He gets yeah. two hundred. He gets two hundred and fifty grand a week already. Yeah. But the guy, the guy's a Beyblade. He's not a footballer. He's a spinning top. Yeah. <laughs> this, this this guy's an actual footballer. A good one as well. A bloody good one. One of the best yeah. in the league. We mentioned last week. Yeah. Well, I think he only, is, and he's only on two hundred grand a week. Bloody hell! Yeah, he had a, a, a little. So it's like it's like what we did with Odegaard. This is robbery if he only yeah. wants two hundred grand a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but um, yeah, exactly. No, I, I I expected nothing else if we were going to sign him. You know, he's 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 in my eyes the best current right winger in Europe. Um, and you you, you got to pay for the best. So yeah, he's so, better than Farage, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's better than, yeah. There you go. Very good. Very good. Um. But, um, and, uh, you know, the, the, obviously the next one on the list um, after Sacco is, is, is Saliba, and we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more. I think the signs are good, but it doesn't sound like anything's close. That was always going to be the hardest one. Uh, there's obviously been a big U turn there with Saliba, and, to sign, and Jack. Um, I think he'll sign. I do think he'll sign as well. Um, but um, that will be. That'll be a big one for us. We can get those three can tied I just down him quickly because I love the fact that you two mentioned how well Gabriel is doing at the back. Gabriel at the back, Gabriel. Um, and you know what? I think part of that is down to Saliba because Saliba has come on and escalated those levels at the back so much that Gabriel's probably had no choice but to even. I mean, he wasn't. He was never a bad defender anyway. He was always a great defender. I think he's improved and I think the improvement has come because of the inclusion of Saliba. Mm. And I just love the fact that they support each other so well. When one make one make a mistake, the other one's there. They work, as you said, they work so well together. It's a joy to watch. You know, as much as it's lovely seeing all build up football and lovely play, total sexy football that only our team can do. Um, it's good to also to watch what happens at the back as well. And them two are just, oh, they're, they're bossing it. They're yeah. bossing it so well. So I, th- I think, I think, I think a lot of some of the credit of Gabriel's improvement and good play, I think he's down to Saliba as well. So, mm-hmm. and, and honestly, guys, he's going to sign. Yeah. 100%. And it's really nice just to add on that is um, a lot of the talk in the media in midweek was, um, was good win by Arsenal against Villa, but you know, they can't do anything if they're going to concede this amount of goals. And I, and I, I felt, you know, that, that, that Mikel Arteta and Gabriel Martinelli said he really emphasised throughout the week how important get back to, to, to having clean sheets were. So it was great. It feels like we, it's been a while since we had clean sheets. Just a sort of caveat to that, though. Um, uh, we've conceded one less goal than City, or two less goals than, than Man City in the, this Premier League season. So I, I think sometimes they look at a game or two and don't disregard the whole season as we've seen it so far it's not like we've been leaking goals throughout and obviously we've had some changes in the central midfield area a couple of injuries that that has cost us you know and 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 and, and um you know affected our ability to, de- to defend like we were and as high as we were and you know we've had some a couple of costly mistakes there but really good to get back to the clean sheet i feel that's hopefully really important i know ramsdale spoke about you know not wanting to win games like we did last week i'm sure from a goalkeeper's perspective this is exactly how he wants to win games. Um, just before we go, let's get predictions. But I do want to ask you, um, Spurs-Chelsea tomorrow, um, big mid-table battle. Um, I, I presume our, our hope is obviously both of them lose, but apparently that's not possible. So we want a nil-nil with two red cars apiece or something like that, probably, right? But I mean, if you were, to, James, if you were to say you had to pick one to lose, who are you picking? Oh, it's it's got to be them lot, innit? Yeah, I don't want I, I don't want them lot to win a raffle, let yeah, alone yeah, yeah, win yeah, a game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I would love them to lose an opening of an envelope if I could. <laughs> Do yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't think I'd. You know, a lot of people chastise me for my opinions as it is. If I think I sat here and said I want them lot down the road to ever win so uh, win a game. I think I'd. Uh, I think I wouldn't be allowed back on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> or yeah. any of the other thousands of podcasts that I do each week. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly, no, 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 no. I I tend to agree with you. Um, you know, um, Neil, what about a cup final? Uh, car boot cup final tomorrow. 
um, between um, you know n- n- newcomers and uh, that's, that's still under, Spurs underdog. Chelsea, isn't it? That's, a, that's their cup final, <laughs> isn't it? That's exactly, all they got left. Exactly. Um, it was good to see that mid-table battle between Palace and, and Liverpool. Yesterday. It was a mid-table six-pointer, and they're both going at it, and it was really Vieira. bitty in there. And that mid-table six-pointer, and in the end, they, they neither of them got it. And I went, oh, oh no, uh, never mind. Um, but um, Neil, yeah, car boot cup final tomorrow. You got the uh, good, you know, the 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 country owned Newcastle have taken over London and um, the, the the underdogs of the world billionaire <laughs> Manchester United um, I actually would prefer Newcastle to win it but they're not going to win yeah, it with Paris in goal so I get I get the feeling that, that uh, no, United Newcastle probably win it we're about to choose yeah. Newcastle what about, you, what about you James I think you're in two minds with this one uh, again as a child of the 90s I don't want Man United winning nothing uh, so, I will sadly take the sports washing Newcastle United in that game. Is there any um, way we can get to a replay? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It, it. it went. It went all around my Twitter and stuff yesterday. It's not the soul, is it? There's, no, no, no. There's oh. there's a new there's a bunch of Newcastle fans on a bus and they're headed obviously to, to London to Wembley. And I don't know who Sunderland had yesterday away. I think they were away to like a London club or something. And the two buses, so the Newcastle bus is filming and they're all singing and, and then all of a sudden someone, you know, I won't do the accent because again, we'll get deplatformed oh, and everything else. Right. But they're like, oh, look, 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 it's the Sunderland bus. So, so they all turn and it's just <laughs> to the two buses and, you know, there's hand signals galore. There's words, but it is incredible the way that they're banging on the bloody window. And it's you just think to yourself, like, who has all who has allowed this? Why have you let both, you know, the Mackhams and the Geordies on yeah. the same weekend in the same? I'm like, you imbeciles, letting this happen. Okay. Thank God they were on the road and they were on two separate buses. But I'm like. Some of them that have gone by train and everything else, they've got to have been in the same place at the same time. And I'm like, yeah. wow. absolute ruckus. But wow, 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 wow. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, yeah, we'll um, see, we'll see. You um, know, carry it, carry us couldn't catch a cold, so I'm not confident that <laughs> no. you know Newcastle are going to do anything. No. Is he? But you never know. Is, is Pope out for more than one game? He is, isn't he? Is it three game? Man? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So that means he's out of Man City next week as well. Oh yeah. Oh, great. Um, okay. Um, Arsenal <laughs> play Everton in midweek. Um, I won't do predictions for beyond that. I don't know if I'll pod again, but I'll, I'll just do the Everton game. Um, Arsenal at home. Obviously, we lost to Everton away, Neil. Massive game. Uh, it's our game in hand. Um, what's your predictions and first scorer? And do you see any changes happening to the team? I expect there will be a few. Oh, you know what? Changes. I. You know what? I've got a feeling... I've got so this is a bit controversial. I, um, I agree with what you guys have been saying about Shaka, and I just think he's tired. I actually, th- though you know, he'll never admit it, he'll never show it. I think he might just be a bit leggy and tired. And is he's been a machine, you know, he has just like Saka has. And I just, I won't be surprised if he brings party in for Shaka. Possibly, possibly. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've got to, I've, you just don't know. But I think other than that, I think it'll be pretty much unchanged. I think he'll stick with what he started with today, I think. Okay. Um, I, I, maybe I'm being, again, a little bit harsh on Eddie, but I think it worked, the trossard Martinelli, uh partnership. Um, and, I, you know, we were unlucky not to get two or three, four nil. So yeah. uh, I, I, apart from that change, I can't see. I mean, you guys might disagree but there's a chance I've got a feeling maybe that's why he brought party on as well near the end could be so right there might, might be onto something it could be, it could, could be that um, we better win because I'm going to be there it's one of the few games I've oh, managed yeah. to get a wow. ticket to yeah um, so yeah because I bought this because it was rescheduled wasn't it so I already had the ticket for this um, I think I think we're going to get revenge I, I, I think we were really hurt by that loss um, and uh, yeah, of course, of course Dyer, she's still going to make our life a misery. But I think um, I think we're going to win. We have to win. We've got no choice. So I, I, I reckon we'll win. Uh, I think we're going to clean up the clean sheet. I think it's going to be like two nil, two nil, and um, mm, Saka, two nil Saka. Get me the double figures in the Premier League. Wouldn't mind that, James. What about you? Uh, you see any different changes to Neil? Mine were um, possibly Tommy Asu, possibly Party, possibly Eddie. That was mine. <laughs> but um, it could be none of them, like Neil said, um, or just one of them. But um, James, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think that 
if you're looking at the basis of what we've seen the last two games, um, I, I, as much as I, you know, support and champion Eddie, um, you got to go with the people to get you the numbers, surely. And Trossard has, you know, he's been robbed of a goal, but he did get an assist. So I think you keep that front three. Um, I agree with what you said earlier. I think he might get party in for this one, but let Jorginho maybe start against Bournemouth. However, again, can you justify dropping Jorginho at the moment? I don't think you can. It's very, very tough. tough. Um, If you were, like Neil just said, if you were to look at the midfield and go, which one would you take out? You would take out Xhaka, but Xhaka is the marathon man, isn't he? You know, he is the energizer bunny, so he doesn't ever not let him play. Um, but yeah, I can I can see the only one being potentially party for Jorginho. I don't think he changes anything else. But uh, I was going to go two nil as well, but I'll I'll change it and I will go for three nil, and I will go for. I think we might score from a set piece. You know these little short corners that we've started to do. I'm going to go for Saliba three nil. I love that. Um, I'll go three um, one. Hopefully, we can win. I think it'll be hard. Deutsch love play, playing against us, doesn't he? When, when was our last home clean sheet? I can't remember. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, or did we get I, I forgot. I forgot like that it Forrest wasn't Forrest at home in it or something. I forgot it was Spurs away was the last clean sheet that we kept all together. I was like, bloody hell, that felt like ages ago we bashed it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Very good performance that as well. They had a 20 minute period in the second half, but we basically dominated them as well. But I'll go 3 1 and I'll go Saka as well. I'll go Saka as well. Um, See so who gets into double figures in a Prem first. Him and Martinelli both on nine, I believe. So um, it'll be interested. Um, Boys, fantastic. Great to get two wins back to back um, away wins. Um, um, and we've got two more big games this week coming up. So let's hope we can do the same again this week at home. So fingers crossed starting with starting with that Everton game on Wednesday. Neil, bring us luck, mate. Up the Arsenal. Stay positive. Yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. 